LumaFusion is hands down the most impressive video editing app I've ever seen on a mobile device. In this hands-on video, we're going to talk about a dozen LumaFusion features that make this app absolutely incredible for iPad and iPhone video editors. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just a quick glimpse at the power that this app possesses. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that you can create projects at a variety of different frame rates. That is something that not every video editing app has, unfortunately, on the iPad or the iPhone, but this app does, LumaFusion, right here. Now, I am running the beta version, so just keep that in mind, so not every feature that I showcase will necessarily be in the production version that's out right now on the App Store. But, for the most part, this should be what you should expect when using LumaFusion. So, when you first start a project, you can go in, name the project, of course. I'm gonna name this one Flower Power, how about that? And once I give it a name, I can choose my frame rate. Now you see I have it set to 24 because that's my global setting currently, but you can see there's a variety of frame rates you can choose from just like that. So now I'm gonna create my project. And like I said, there's those global settings you can go in. So these are basically the defaults for every new project that you start. So I have 24 frames per second set as my default for new projects. And of course you can go in and change those anytime you wish. Now let's talk about a big part of any video editing workflow, marking in and out points. So in the source viewer, you can use gestures just like that. A swipe up marks an out point, a swipe down marks an in point like that, but you don't have to use gestures. You can use the buttons beneath the source viewer. So here is an in point right here. And then I can move my playhead and set an out point if I wish to do so. I can also use keyboard shortcuts to mark in and out points. And once you're satisfied with your selection, just grab the source viewer, drag down to the timeline, and the area that you marked in and out will appear down in the timeline. Now, one of the great things about LumaFusion is that it supports multiple audio and video tracks. So I can add up to three audio video tracks. So that means video with audio tracks. And then I can add up to three additional solo audio tracks. So just standalone audio tracks. So you can see I have two video tracks on the timeline right there. I have room for one more video track right above that. And then below that, I can add up to three solo audio tracks or three standalone audio tracks. So let's go in and find some royalty free music. There we go. Just load that into the source viewer and then we'll just drag down right there, drop it on the timeline. And yeah, you can just keep building out just like that folks. Again, you can have up to six tracks in total. And that includes voiceover recording. So you can add a voiceover with ease. Just select voiceover from the plus button. You can see the audio meters there. And now I'm going to record a voiceover. This is a voiceover, folks. This is a voiceover. All right, now when we're done, we just press the stop button and we can preview our recording by hitting the play button. And we can see if it suits our fancy. And if we like it, we can accept it like that. Now we can also adjust audio levels, which is really cool. So you get all six tracks there. You get audio level adjustments for all six tracks on the timeline. So if the voiceover is too low or maybe the music is too loud, I can adjust that accordingly and make it sound just right. Mix it up so that it sounds right. So we'll just adjust that a little bit more. We'll play it back. Yeah, that sounds good. Of course, you guys can't hear it, but trust me, it sounds good. All right, you can also split clips at the playhead using a two finger tap gesture. This is awesome. Of course you can split clips using the split button right there, right at the playhead, but you can also do this. Two finger tap, split those clips just like that. You can also use ripple and slip edits, which is super powerful for anyone who uses an NLE on a desktop. So you can see there is my ripple edit. Make sure there's no spaces between the edits, basically like a magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. And you can turn that on or off if you wish to. You can turn on insert or overwrite. And you can also slip edit. So I turn on slip and watch, I'm gonna just move the selection here and that automatically reflects and updates right in the timeline. Super powerful features, folks. If you use a standalone NLE on a desktop, you understand how powerful this is. Having this on an iPad on an iOS device is just incredible. There's also the frame and fit editor. So I can go in, I can double tap on a clip on my timeline to open the editor like this. So now I can go in here, scale up or scale down a clip. I can rotate a clip. I can even keyframe a clip. We'll talk about keyframes in just a second, but here you can see I can scale up 
I can rotate. I can move as well. Scaling up and moving. I can get that clip just like I want it. And have that precision rotation. Having the Apple Pencil actually is pretty handy. All right, I think I, let's try something different. Let's do it like that. How about that? So let's go ahead and exit out of the, the editor here. Tap the back button. All right, and you can see that updates right in the timeline. And I play that back, the source viewer. Excellent, folks. Now, like I mentioned, you can set keyframes within the editor as well. So I can go in here, set a keyframe, move my playhead using the precision mover. We'll talk about that in a second. But once I make a change, you see a new keyframe is automatically created. And then if I move again, make another change, again, automatic creation of that keyframe. And then when I play it back, it's gonna automatically animate between keyframes, just like this. Bam, that is awesome. That is awesome, <laughs> I'm sorry. That is incredible to have this type of power on an iPad. You also have frame by frame adjustments. We've already really showed you this, but let me just show you right now, up close and personal. So you can see each individual frame here. This is a 24 frames per second project. And you can see as I'm moving each individual frame, there's one second because 23, 24, you get it. So super precision, incredible accuracy, thanks to that precision editor. There's also color presets and adjustments. Now, obviously this is not DaVinci Resolve, it's not even Final Cut Pro as far as uh, color adjustments are concerned and color grading and things of that nature, but you do have some basic features you can go in here. There's lots of other effects as well, but I'm gonna just add a preset here and you can see these sliders. I can adjust things like brightness, I can adjust contrast, saturation, I can adjust the various RGB colors there, gamma, hue. So let's change this up, make it look a little funky here. How about, how about that right there? All right. Now you can also copy and paste attributes. So the changes that I just made here, say I wanted to migrate those changes over to another clip. Well, I can copy those changes, go over to another clip. We'll just move over to here, go into the editor. And now we can just paste those attributes that we copied from that other clip. So we'll just deselect the attributes that we don't wanna copy over, select the color, and then paste those attributes. Doesn't get any simpler than that. All right, so the last feature we're gonna talk about today, keyboard shortcuts. As I mentioned earlier, this is a beta feature, so it's not quite in the production version just yet, but something to look forward to, right? So of course, you can just hold the command button, find all the shortcuts there. They are contextual, so they will change depending on where you are. But as you can see, lots and lots of keyboard shortcuts. So I can actually go in here, look in the source viewer, set in and out points using my keyboard, drop them right into the timeline, I can use JKL to edit. And then I can, once I have my in and out points, I can obviously still touch the screen as well. And then just tap W to drop in my selection. All right, set the out point, tap W, bam. Tap on the timeline. All right, we're gonna zoom in a little bit. Command plus and then press backspace to go to the beginning of the timeline. I can press the space bar to pause, use the arrow keys to go frame by frame, press the C key to select the clip over the playhead, and then option bracket to trim. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at a dozen LumaFusion features that make this app an absolutely incredible experience on the iPad. I highly recommend it, only 20 bucks on the App Store. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.